Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Chang Ho Kim from Terabyte Interconnection and Package Laboratory at Department of Electrical Engineering in KAIST. I'm very honored to present at this NEMO 2020 conference as a keynote speech speaker. I will present on deep learning based design and simulation methodologies for high bandwidth memory module in artificial intelligence server computers. This slide shows the outline of my presentation. I will start with artificial intelligence and machine learning introduction. Then I will introduce challenges associated with AI computer architectures and high bandwidth memory module designs. At the next chapters, I will give you short introductions of signal integrity design examples with machine learning and wireless power transport core design examples with machine learning. And finally, I will give you future directions. I will start with part one as introduction to machine learning. Machine learning describes the, our brain in the computer coding. Compared to previous artificial intelligence, machine learning is training the neural network using data. The data can be obtained from the internet or sometimes we can generate the data from artificial the virtual reality world using computer simulations. In other words, I would say the in the machine learning, data is very essential for a training process. If we have more and more data, probably the neural network will become more smarter and smarter. Sometimes we generate the data, uh, sometimes we obtain the data from the internet, and sometimes we generate the data using computer simulation in virtual world. Neural network has multiple layers, including input layers and hidden layers, and hidden layers, and finally it has outer layers. The number of the hidden layers may exceed more than 100 or 200 or thousands in the, in the long future. That is because why we are calling this neural network as a deep learning network. In this configuration, the number of input element is very limited, three, but actual neural network may have billions and billions element of input vector and about, of course, output vector could be uh, many higher numbers. Usually the input vector could be a picture or movie or sentences or whole book, it could be a whole book. And the output of the, this neural network is usually a classification. It has the probabilities. For example, if we show them a picture, the classification output layer could be a multiple number of animal names. One of them could be tigers and one the other could be a cat. And this network will give us what is the identity of this picture. Each cell at each layer is connected with connect, connected. And when they are connected, they are multiplied with weights that is uh, unknown parameters at the beginning of training. But if we are, are training them with more and more data, this weight that is the uh, amplification of the connection between the two cells will be determined. And number of uh, this uh, element unknown uh, uh, parameters to be trained during the training process could be a billions and billions of numbers. And so once again, 
uh, in this uh, machine learning is the one of the core parts of the artificial intelligence and this all the parameters of at, at which is connecting between the cells at the hidden layers uh, will be determined by the training process and the, the training process will use the huge number of big data. In the list uh, for the past 10 years, machine learning is becoming really, really powerful and uh, it will spread all over the world and industry. And there are three factors that enables this uh, uh, machine learning very, very strong. One of the reasons is that we have more and more big data. And because everybody has the camera at their smartphone, also we are uploading many, many uh, uh, video data onto the YouTube. Also we are watching the uh, Netflix movie. So everybody, uh, we ha have more and more data. And especially because of COVID-19, our school is closed and we, we are doing a lot of activities, including education and medical services on, online. And that means we will have more and more big data. Second uh, um, enablers for the machine learning is that we, we discovered deep learning algorithm that's very simple algorithm. And but main uh, reason that AI is becoming strong is that because we have more computer performance. The computer performance is increased by the help of GPU, a uh, graphic process unit, and DRAM. GPU is majorly made by NVIDIA, and uh, DRAM is made by Samsung Electronics and SK Hynix. So, um, as I know that uh, most of the audiences at this conference uh, has background of uh, signal integrity and by help of the signal integrity of semiconductors and computers actually this improved uh, computer performance enabled uh, emergency of artificial intelligence in these days. <clears throat> there are some good values and bad uh, things about AI. I would like to discuss shortly about the uh, constructive values of AI. Because AI can do a lot of work for our human brain and it can save time, uh, labor, resources, capital, and energy. So it can provide us time for human or more creative activities than routine activities. And I'm sure that it can improve the quality of our lives and we may have freedom from labor and nature. So we can have more happy time. Most basic element of a machine learning a neural network is called perceptron. Perceptron is a unique element of connection in the neural network. In the previous layers, there are many uh, elements, a uh, cell, uh, one to XM, it is multiplied with the weight number W0, W1, W2, and WM. And all of these inputs are summarized at the perceptron. If the summarized uh, uh, value number uh, is larger than certain criteria, it will propagate it and transmit it to output. If that is smaller than certain critical value, it, it will not be propagated to the next level. Uh, it resembles the basic signal propagation mechanism at, in our uh, brain cells. Usually, so each perception has to have a capability of multiplications and addition. In addition to that, they have to calculate uh, whether it, is, it exceeds certain criteria. And mathematically, it could be, that is called activation function. And there are many different types of activation functions. It could be linear function, logistic function, or hyperbolic tangent function. Typically, um, in the modern uh, machine learning network, we usually logistic function or hyperbolic functions. 
and output will uh, be uh, between 0 to 1. And it um, uh, summarized the number exceeds certain criteria, it will have an output of 1. And I, once again, this perception is very basic element of neural network. And in the neural network, there will be billions and billions number of these perceptions. As I mentioned before, during the training process, this weight number from W0 to WM has to be decided. So I would like to give you a short introduction of training process of neural network that ha has two different types of network. First one is called forward propagation. The other process is called back backward propagation. For example, let's assume that this is uh, one of the CNN convolution neural network that is suitable for identification of, of in a picture. Let's assume that we show them a picture that is a two-dimensional or multi-dimensional tensor vector, and it may have billions of elements of input. If we show them uh, this picture, the signal will propagate along these uh, uh, layers. Uh, as I mentioned that, this connection means that um, this input signal will be transmitted to the next level with multiplication of weight number. If this summarized number exceeds certain criteria, it, the output will be propagated to next level. Otherwise, it will be stopped or it will, it will stay there. Just it doesn't go to the next level. So at the final stage, it will give you a probability whether it is a cat or tiger. Probably probability of cat, of a cat is 99%, 0.99, and probability to be a tiger could be 1%, 0.01. That kind of process is called for the propagation training process. Let's assume that uh, there is an error uh, between the, our known uh, labeling and this output. Then we have to correct this weights of these older connections, then it has to uh, gradually and a sequence step by step that, that has to update these weight numbers. That is called backward propagation. And they, they repeat this forward propagation and backward propagation in you know, millions and millions of times until it has very good accuracy at the output level. That is called uh, training process of the neural network. <clears throat> In this previous slide, as I mentioned before, there is a process that uh, if the answer is not correct, uh, then we have to update these weight numbers. And this correction has to be described by a mathematical function in the deep neural network. And there are many different types of uh, cost function, error function. And in other words, it will be uh, described as error function. And uh, the, sometimes we are using the mean square error function. Sometimes we are using entropy function. There are many different type of functions. In mean square error functions, if this yi is the true uh, value and this yi dash is estimated value, we, uh, uh, we the difference is squared and summarized all, uh, all the elements. So we, we summarize the errors of all these elements of output uh, layer. Then this uh, function is called mean square errors. And we update this forward propagation and backward propagation. We repeat them until this mean square error function is becoming minimal. And if the error function is becoming minimal, then we stop the, the training process. And when we are updating this uh, weight numbers, we, we are using the differentiation method that is called gradient descent. Let's assume this curve represents the error function and we keep calculating the gradient of this function. And gradually we update this, why is, become, why is actually the weight that will be determined during the uh, training process. And we keep differentiation process until we come to the minimal position where the gradient is becoming zero. 
and that is called gradient descent process. We keep this uh, training process and especially the backward process by defining the uh, cost function and by applying the gradient descent, we achieve the minimum um, value. Then we terminate the training process. Let me shortly talk about the future direction of artificial intelligence. Uh, at this moment, we are having uh, many different types of neural network. One of them is called the convolution neural network that uh, resembles the eye. It recognizes the object in the picture and movie. And then sometimes we are using the uh, LSTM or BRT or transfer learning to represent our speeching capability of human being. So uh, this AI, uh, machine learning can listen, um, watch, and speech. And also they have some capability of creativity. That neural network is called generative advisory neural network. That is called GAN. At this moment, each uh, neural network is separated they are developed by a separate group, but in the near future, maybe in the 10 years, they will, they will this GAN, CNN, uh, transport learning, and RNN can be combined into a single neural network. And then our whole brain can be replaced by the machine learning. <clears throat> in the long future, maybe in another 10 years and 20 years, they, they will be trained uh, with more and more data and this uh, AI can have emotions, ethics, imaginations, and religions. And then it is actually almost, it becomes a human brain and that is called artificial general intelligence. I think that is the way to go in the future for next 10 or 30 years. Now let's talk about the AI computer architectures. As I mentioned before, uh, in the, during the training process, there will be many multiplications and addition processes. But each element in the neural network will be calculated in parallel. It doesn't need to be a sequence. And one element, and uh, maybe let's assume that uh, in each layer, the uh, la uh, cell element is millions or billions. It does. Uh, they, they are not need to be calculated in sequence. They can be calculated in parallel. Then parallel, uh, in other words, in mathematically, forward propagation and backward propagation can be represented by matrix multiplications. And matrix multiplication is really, really uh, parallel processing. That means that if you want to uh, develop a computer for AI machine, or if you want to design GPU and memory system for AI machine, it has to have maximum parallelism. That is the future way direction of computer architectures for AI computers. And in other, in other words, also, we have to think about the data backlog. Uh, let's assume you have big data in a, in a point, but you should use that for training process. But more important element of computer architecture is actually big data per second. How fast you can transmit a data, a group of data from one location to the other. Even though you have big data in your uh, memory, it has to be transmitted to GPU. So technically wise, as I mentioned before, first the, the important uh, architecture requirement of AI computer is that it has to have extreme parallelism. Second requirement is that you should be able to send big data per second. You should maximize the big data per second. There are certain bad lag of, about the, of these requirements, as I mentioned before. In order to calculate the, uh, the machine learning in your computers, your computer has to have big amount of extreme parallelism and also you should have very high speed data transmissions. But there are some problems associated with the computer architectures. That is called von Neumann architecture. This is the actual von Neumann architecture uh, 
in the computer, it has a memory and CPU or GPU. Actually, it is physically separated in the current computer system. So when they are doing the uh, training process, they has to have many, many uh, matrix calculations. Then they have to bring this uh, data from the memory and they decode and they calculate and store. This one, two, three, four, five process take a lot of time and power consumptions. This is kind of a serial process. That is because data is stored in the DRAM and they have to calculate this uh, matrix calculation in GPU. Physically, they have to be placed as close as possible to minimize the time latency and also if we want to minimize the power consumption. And also this process should be parallelized by thousand times or millions of times. There are some uh, reports saying that many of power consumption is uh, between DRAM and process, between off-chip and on-chip. So we have to minimize this power. Uh, if we have the memory processing inside chip, but that is not uh, the case in our GPU design. And the currently, uh, most of power consumption happens, occurs between the DRAM and processing uh, data transmissions. So this is the future direction of high performance computing system. Extreme parallel interconnections are needed between process and memory. One of the possible solution for that extreme parallel interconnection is 3D structures where we are using the TSPs, in which case um, GPU and the memory stack on the top of each other. And also in those cases, temperature will be very high. Also still, because of uh, uh, GPU has to do a lot of work and the uh, data transmission between DRAM and GPU, power consumption will be extremely high and temperature will be very high. So we have to found some uh, power and thermal controls. And by combining this, we have to have a new computer architectures and probably we need the um, material innovations. Eventually, we have to keep the cost power, thermal, and materials. At these days, uh, uh, there are some candidates for the AI computing architecture. One of them is HBM. In this case, GPU and memory is stacked on the top of each other. The other uh, uh, approach is PIM, in which case inside chip DRAM and uh, logic is integrated on the same chip. And uh, finally, the future direction could be neuromorphic chip. In those cases, trend at the transistor level, they have calculation unit and memory together. In this direction is the from HBM to PIM to neuromorphic is that they have to combine memory and calculate this solution element as close as possible to minimize the power consumption. Also to accelerate the calculation time, they have to have parallelism and it, it will have more and more parallelism as we go from HBM to PIM to neuromorphic. In my laboratory at KAIST, uh, we are majorly working on HBM design, but that is very close to uh, commercialization at this moment, but in the case of neuromorphic chip, it will take a long time because we have to develop new uh, material. Also, we have to find the cost, uh, cost effective uh, process of semiconductor system. So our group is now working on HPM and PIM design. Major uh, direction of this HPM and PIM is that GPU and memory is stacked on the top of each other and we need the TSV. In the case of PIM, Korea is, has strong DRAM companies, so they will bring some calculation uh, element from GPU to put into their DRAM to, to, to increase the efficiency of the AI computing. Now, um, I'd like to give you an example of HBM. HBM is a very good candidate for AI machine. And this is the cross-sectional view of current uh, second generation HBM. Uh, we are developing third and fourth and fifth HBM generation at this moment in our laboratory. In this case, actually, the substrate is uh, made using the silicon because we have to have uh, thousands of 10,000 very large 
number of interconnection, parallel interconnection between process and memory, and DRAM is stacked on the top of each other. And uh, usually the number of process and memory is the 32 or 64. But in this HBM case, that to increase the parallelism, we have more than 1,000 interconnections between process and memory. Especially uh, when we are stacking the GPU and DRAM on the top of each other, we need the vertical interconnection that is called through silicon via. And by using the through, uh, through silicon via, the diameter is very small so that we can have many, many number of the interconnections that can increase the uh, parallelism. And also the interconnection length is very short. That means the power consumption and time delay of signal propagation will be very, very small. And this is the picture of uh, uh, Hynix 16 DRAM stack with TSB. And I think in the future, maybe they will achieve more than 100 stack on the top of each other. As I mentioned before, in those cases, we will have some problem associated with power consumption and thermal control. Our laboratory was able to demonstrate more than 30 gigabps uh, the signal transmission through the uh, through silicon via, and as you see that the data rate, this is the actual high measurement. And also we was able to transmit data between the memory and DRAM with more than 30 gigabps. So currently HBM can achieve about a terabyte per second between DRAM and process processor, but in the future it will go to 100 terabyte per second between GPU and memory. And uh, some of the previous design was commercialized by NVIDIA, and this is the one of the picture of Jason Wang. And is, you see that this uh, substrate uh, is uh, silicon, and you can see the decoupling capacitors. This is GPU and memory. As I mentioned before, to, e to increase the parallelism between DRAM and GPU, there are more than thousands of interconnections between our uh, memory module to uh, NVIDIA. So Four, four of them will be about more than four, 5,000 interconnections. And as I mentioned before, there will be millions of million interconnections in the future. Right now, HBM uh, one two it has the four stack or eight stack, but in the near future, it will be 16 uh, uh, stack or more, more and more. Uh, memory will be stacked on the top of each other because we want to achieve more density, more data, and more data per second with more uh, parallelism. And also our group is working on some uh, novel design. In this case, we are putting some circuits inside the HBM interposer. And now there are many different approaches, FPGA and TPU, or, or by Xilinx, Google, and Microsoft, Amazon. Uh, they are also developing AI computers and AI semiconductors. And also NVIDIA Group and AMD are using the GPU and HBM system, but I'm sure that they will be combined. All of this PG and TP will use the HBM architectures in the next 10 years, and they will have uh, millions of parallelism. And also this uh, GPU and PIM, as I mentioned, processing in memory will be combined together to be um, active HBM architectures and interconnection level of number will be a millions level and it will be used for graphic and game machines. And uh, this FPG and TPU type of HBM architecture will be used for data center AI servers. And this was, I predicted this, uh, I designed this, uh, slides about a few years ago. And last year I found that Google TPU has this HBM architectures. You can see that one, two, three, four HBM architectures. And also last year, uh, this year I saw that Intel Nova, the new um, uh, computing architecture for servers and edge computing. And they also have a silicon interposer and HBM architectures. This is exactly same architecture as HBM. As I mentioned before, the new computing architecture for AI computer will 
have extreme parallelism and, and also they have to put the D processing unit and DRAM should be placed as close as possible. The solution of this architecture at this moment, this is 2.5D architecture, is that TPU HPM and the Novada HPM. Now, I'd like to go into the uh, signal integrity design using machine learning. And now we are doing the, a lot of, uh, uh, when we are want to ensure signal integrity, we are doing a lot of uh, eye diagram simulations. One of them is the transient eye diagram simulation and the other approach is statistical eye diagram estimations. But it takes a lot of time. It takes long time and power consumption. So our group want to develop some neural network to do this eye diagram simulations. Conventional method of <clears throat> eye height and eye width uh, estimation is that we decide the, uh, we start with design parameters, then we do the 3D EM simulations and we extract the touchstone file and we do the transient simulation. And finally, we obtain the eye height and eye width. In our approach, using the machine learning process is very simplified. We give them design parameters and we apply it to the machine learning model. Of course, we need have to have some training processes previously, and it simply estimate I and I width. And so my approach is that we what about applying the machine learning method for our signal integrity simulation and analysis. So if let's assume that this is proposed to team neural network. It could be simple deep neural network, or it could be CNN type of neural network, or it could be LSTM type of neural network or re reinforced model. And we give them just the uh, um, uh, structures and we give them training uh, input. We, do, we have to do the previous simulations and we develop this proposed neural deep neural network. And finally, we can use this model for estimation of I height and I width. Um, uh, it is a flow chart of the proposed method. It composed of data generation process, the DNN training process, and DNN estimation process. And we start with the target system. We uh, obtain the Latin hypercube sampling method data generation. And then uh, we apply to training process, as I mentioned before, it has the forward propagation and backward propagation. During the training process, we have initialization training, forward propagation, backward propagation. If the cost function is a certain minimum value, we terminate and, and then we go to the estimation process. And we then finally, we check the I height and I width. And this is the interconnection structures we used for um, this validations and we, we choose the uh, input, a minimum and maximum range for, for usable for HPM design. Uh, this is the actual, this is very simplified uh, neural network. It has four, a number of nodes is the four. We have uh, three hidden layer, input layer, output layer. We have uh, 240 training sets and 60 data sets and learning rate was the 0.0001 and we used the maximum iteration is the 1 million. So now this is the actual result and the full uh, EM simulation uh, give us uh, 0.767 volt eye opening. Our deep neural network actually give us an answer of 0.6 766 volt. So the error rate is extremely small, less than 0.1%. However, in the full wave simulation, it takes more than an hour, but our case, it takes just one second. So very fastly, uh, it estimates eye height and eye width. And this is the comparison between 3D EM simulations and our proposed method. Our proposed method is the neural network. As you see that, for the many different cases of test set, I height and I height between the EM simulation and our proposed method is very, very similar. So it shows that very good accuracy and efficiency of 
artificial intelligence machine learning method for estimation of uh, eye diagram, uh, eye diagram, as I mentioned that. Uh, for this full simulation of four or 60 data set, it takes 63 hours of estimation time, but our proposed method just takes uh, 1.7 seconds. So time cannot be compared between the two, but estimate the error range is less than 3%. So it's a really good demonstration of if it's to show the efficiency of machine learning. Now we also extended our research for the case of uh, a power integrity PDN network. This is a great um, cross-sectional view of HBM. It has a GPU and HBM and proposal and PCB. And now we have to have through silicon via and uh, decoup on chip decoupling capacitors at DRAM, GPM, HBM with the proposal. So we want to optimize the um, this G the decoupling capacitor design, PDN design in GPU module. Uh, our methodology is deep Q learning methodology. It is uh, one of the kind of reinforcement learning. So in this case, we don't give them answer. They, they play the game. The computer is doing by himself. They are playing the game. And until they found the, the final answer. So it is a kind of game uh, network. Uh, human are, are not involved in any of the simulations and determination process. We just give them environment, they play the game. So for example, they uh, decide uh, the coupling capacitor value at certain point and they do the action and they calculate the PDN impedance and they determine the reward. On, they just keep going on action and reward until they meet the certain criteria. And we, the computer observes itself and they determine when to start. And uh, initially, our PDN design is the very high resonance, high impedance peaks, but they just keep the playing the game. AI is the play, playing the game until they minimize the impedance. The reward is to lower and lower PDN impedance. And uh, really, uh, our students or engineer is not just uh, involved in this uh, machine learning design or processing. We just give them what is the PDN impedance and we just give them the target impedance. And the machine learning, one of the machine learning methods, reinforcement learning, finished their design. And by having the 16 process, initially they have very high impedance curve, but finally they was able to meet their uh, specification. The target impedance was de designed by ourselves and it is the, described by a red line in this figure. So uh, this is the final design of PDN by machine learning. This uh, uh, red line represents the final design done by machine learning and we give just them the target impedance. Of course, each line represents the capacitance and inductance and capacitance and inductance. I'm not sure I, machine learning understand capacitance and inductance. But what I found is that they minimized the impedance and they completed this PTN impedance design. And it seems that they understand capacitance, resonance, and inductance. And as their uh, learning process is going on and going on, training episode, we call it that is the episode. They are trying many different episodes and finally they are converged to a certain value as the number of episodes increase further and further we see that error rate or as a simultaneous switching noise level is going down to a certain number. Also we apply this machine learning methodologies for uh, coil design. This coil is use, used for wireless power transfer and also we develop neural network and uh, we, we design the proposed method. This uh, slide shows the flow, flow chart from the uh, target system definition and definition of efficiency and DNN training. Finally, we develop DNN model. And um, uh, you can see very close agreement uh, between our 
AI model and previous mathematical calculation. So AI can do a lot of calculations and to replace the complicated 3DM simulations and the mathematical calculations. And however, um, labeling that is coming from the 3DM simulation takes about eight hours, but our DNN estimation takes just 40 seconds. Our proposed deep neural network model can be used for development of wireless power transfer system for implanted devices for human body, such as hearing aid or heart machines and future brain semiconductors. So now, I, this is the conclusion of my presentation today. Uh, we developed HBM that is suitable for AI computing, especially for extreme parallelism and very low power. And now using this HBM, we developed a neural, deep neural network. And this deep neural network seems to understand signal integrity and they, was, they were able to do a lot of simulations and uh, design optimizations used by themselves. We are not involved in any of their process. So uh, humans probably can, computer can do the semiconductor design and computer design, they can do the deep neural network. So probably they don't need our help. That is good or bad, I don't know. But uh, we are enjoying these researches. This is end of my presentation. Thank you for your kind of attention. Uh, I, I'm, I really hope you enjoy the NEMO 2020 at this conference. Today, shortly, I, I introduced what is the AI machine learning and what is the computer architecture. And also, finally, I, I give you on some examples to use AI machines for signal integrity analysis. Uh, I hope that this presentation is interesting to you. Thank you.